Hello, in this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to take some standard 3D text and turn it into this cool outlined illustrated style. Okay, so in After Effects, I've already got my composition set up. I've made it 1080 by 1080 at 25 frames per second, and it's just called 3D Pre. Now I'm gonna be building this effect using this live text layer, but you can also build it using shape layers. Right, so the first thing we need to do is just make this 3D. So select our text layer and hit our 3D switch here. Then we just need to make sure that we're using the Cinema 4D 3D engine. And to check that, if you're in the latest After Effects version, you'll have this drop down here that appears when you turn on the 3D layer. And we just need to make sure this is set to Cinema 4D. However, if you don't have this option, uh, go into your composition settings, go to 3D render, and in this drop down, just make sure you're set to Cinema 4D. Okay. And so that we can see what's going on with our 3D text, let's go and select our four views. And now you'll see that we have a top, a front and a right view, as well as our active camera view. And now what I'm going to do is just go to our text layer and fold it down until we see geometry options. And then what we want to do is go into this option. And to give our text some depth, we are going to increase the extrusion depth. And if you look in the top and right view, as we increase this value, you'll see that our text is being extruded backwards. So I'm going to set this to around 80. And one thing about doing extrusions in After Effects is that the extrusion goes back in Z space. So if we want to animate our text to sort of be growing towards camera, what we need to do is just go to our scale of our text layer, we'll unlink the properties and on our Z scale, just set this to minus 100. And if we go back into our geometry options, you'll see we're extruding forward and now instead. And then the rest of the options here, we can just leave as default. Now, currently our text is flat white and we can't see any of the detail of the extrusion. So we need to add some light to our scene. So let's go to layer, new, light. And what we're gonna be doing is actually building an array of lights around our text. Because in the step later on, when we come in to add in our outlines, we actually need to be able to see the individual faces of the extrude of the text. So by creating an array of lights on each of the different sides of the text, then we can highlight them in different colors and that will give us nice defined edges. And hopefully this will make a bit more sense as I start building up the lights. So our first light, let's call it front and we're gonna leave it as a point light and I'm gonna set the color to white. And then we'll leave the intensity at 50% and everything else the same and hit OK. Now let's just position this in the center of our scene. So we select our light and hit P to bring it position. And we'll just set this to 540. 540 or whatever the center of your scene is. And the Z position, you can just leave where it is for now. And we may need to fine tune it later. Okay, so then let's duplicate this light and we'll call this right. And this light we're going to make green and you'll see why a, bit, a little bit later on. And then what we're going to do is just move this light to the right of our text layer. And we just want to sit it behind, slightly behind our text. And you'll see now we're starting to get these green edges. So now let's duplicate this and we'll just call it left. And then we just need to move this over to the left of our text. And then we can go back to our front light and let's duplicate this again. We'll call this bottom and this one we're going to make red. And we're just going to move this to the bottom underneath our text. Okay. And by looking at the top and the side views, you can get an idea of whereabouts your lights are positioned. And finally, let's just duplicate this one more time and we'll just call this top. And we're just going to move this to above the text. And now we've got an array of lights, which is basically lighting our text so that our front face is white and our side faces are green and our top and bottom faces are red. And later on, when we want to colorize our text to whatever we want, it's going to be re really useful having our different faces, different colors. Now, one other thing we can do to this to help give our text a more even lighting is go to the material options in our text layer. And we're basically going to set everything here to zero apart from diffuse which we'll set to 100 and this is basically going to get rid of any potential reflections or specular highlights and that kind of stuff from the lights and we're just going to purely have a um, a flat texture so we'll set this to zero we'll set diffuse to 100 and we'll set everything else to zero okay so now we can just go back and reduce our view to one view now let's add a camera to our scene layer new camera 
and you see I already have this set in but basically we want a really really long focal length and I've set mine to 500 and what this will do is I'll, it will give our text a really nice sort of flat 3D look okay and to be able to easily control our camera let's create a new null and we're going to make this 3D and then I'm just going to parent the camera to our null let's call the null cam control and now if we go into our cam control rotation and now we can rotate our camera and we'll be able to move our text into a nice position. And if we want to get a bit closer into our text, we can go to our camera and in our position, let's just increase this. So we zoom in on our text some more. Okay. So now we've got our text in a nice position and rotation that we're happy with. And as you can see, all the faces of the geometry of our text are nicely separated with the different colors. So what we can do now is start styling this. So let's grab our 3D pre-comp here and let's drag it into a new composition. I'm just going to call the new comp main. And what we're going to do is separate this text into three parts. We're going to have our outlines. We're going to have our front face and then we're going to have the extrude. So let's duplicate this a couple of times. We'll call the top one outlines. The second one face and the bottom one extrude. And let's start on working on the outline. So let's just hide our face and extrude layers. And so what we're gonna actually use for this is the find edges effect. And what this is gonna do is basically just add a line wherever there is a defined edge. And that's why it was quite important for us to make sure that each of the sort of faces of our geometry are separated with the color. And so we can see a bit more clearly what's going on with these lines. Let's create a new background layer. Okay, and if I zoom in, you'll see we've got some nice lines here, but they're not very uniform at the moment. So these parts are thicker than the outer edges. So in order to fix this, let's go back into our 3D Pre. And what we're going to do is create a background in this comp as well. And I'm just going to make it a sort of dark purpley color. I'm going to just call this BG. And if we go back into our main comp, you'll see now we've got a nice uniform line. One thing I've found that helps as well is sometimes this line does get a little bit jaggedy. So we can go back into our 3D pre layer and we'll create a new adjustment layer. Just call this blur. And we're just going to go to effects, blur and sharpen, fast box blur. I'm just going to add a tiny slight blur over the top of this. And what this is going to do is just going to soften off our edges a little bit. So then when we go back into our main comp, our lines are a little bit softer. And if there is any jaggedness there, it sort of re uh, reduces it a little bit. Okay, now then what we want to do is get rid of the white fill that we've got on here and just leave our lines. So we can do that by going to Effect, Obsolete, Luma Key. And we're going to set this to Key Out Brighter. And you'll see that it gets rid of everything. And then we just need to increase the threshold and our lines will start coming back. And the amount that you need to set the threshold to is going to vary. But you just want to do it until you've kind of got a smooth line back. Okay, something like that looks good. And then let's go to effect, generate fill. And we can just fill these lines with black. Okay. And now we've got our fill. You'll see that our some of our lines are really, really rough and jaggedy. And basically this is just an anti-aliasing issue with creating 3D in After Effects. And an easy way of how to fix this is by using a free plugin from Plugin Everything called FXAA. And I've put the link in the description below to download this. And if we go to FX, Plugin Everything, FXAA, you'll see that that smooths it off really, really nicely. Now to further refine and smooth these lines a little bit more, we can go and add a simple choker effect and by duplicating this effect and setting the choke mat to negative and positive values we can really smooth and refine this line so i'm going to start by setting this first simple choker to two you see this chokes back our line quite a lot now if we duplicate this and we'll set this to minus two the thickness is basically what we had before but if i turn them off you'll see that it's quite a bit smoother and then we can just du duplicate this again make sure that they're both underneath the initial ones and again it's smoother again now you see this line's a lot smoother now but we've lost a little bit of definition the corners have gone a bit blobby and you'll see this area here where we've completely lost the top edge of the dot on the exclamation mark so to kind of fix this and bring back a bit more uniformity in our line we can go to our luma key and we can just tweak the threshold and by increasing it it will increase the thickness of our lines and we can also tweak the edge thin value. And if we set this to a negative value, 
it will increase the thickness of our line again. And tweaking these two values can be really useful if you're using curved layers. So if I go back into the 3D pre-comp and just quickly change the text to say so, and you'll see that now we've got curved letters that our faces on our extrude aren't as defined now. So we have these areas where the colors are merged and we've got this blending going on. So then when we go back into our main comp, we get these areas here, which can look quite cool, but also you may not want them. And so by playing with the threshold and the edge thin, and if you reduce the threshold down, then you can get rid of that. You may find sometimes as well, you need to bring the threshold down quite a lot. And sometimes this can like lead other lines to sort of disappear or get too thin so then you can play around with the edge thin maybe set that to minus two and then bring things back up but basically yeah you sometimes have to tweak these values a little bit to get get it to work especially on these curved letters okay i've just undone all of that to get us back to where we were before i think the lines are looking pretty good now there's maybe these areas here where they're a bit too close but we can possibly tweak that later on by just changing the size of our extrude but for now, let's move on and add some color to the face. So let's turn off our outlines layer and turn on our face. And we basically just want to isolate the front face. So one way I found to do that is by going to effect color correction black white. Now, the reason we made our lights in our 3D pre-comp red and green is because in the black and white effect, we can individually control how black or white our different colors are. So we know that the bottom faces of our text are red. So then we can tweak how black or white the bottom faces are. And the same with our greens. We know those are our side faces. And if we go back into our 3D Pre, this bit's turned a bit yellow. So then we can just increase the yellows and this will make this white too. And because our background is purple, we can also increase the uh, blues and that'll make our background white as well. And then what we can then do is go to effect obsolete luma key, key, key out brighter. And again, just increase this threshold until our front face comes back. Now you may get these little edges here. So you can just go to effect map simple choker and you can just slightly increase the amount on the choke mat until those edges disappear. And then if we turn our outlines back on, We've got our outline layer and we've got our face layer. And then we can go on our face layer, we can go to effect, generate fill, and then we can color this whatever we want. Okay, and now finally, let's work on the extrude layer. So we'll turn that back on and let's just hide the other two for now. And for extrude, we're gonna use the same technique as the face by using the black and white effect to basically just control the color of our faces. And what I'm going to do is just make our bottom faces black. So we go to the reds and we'll just set this all the way down. And then we're going to set the our side faces and make these fully white. So we fully increase the greens to 300. And as we know, we've got that yellow there too. And then we'll increase that to 300 too. Okay, so now we have our bottom and side faces nice and separated, but we've still got the gray of our background and the gray of our face too. So to get rid of this, and just to reduce our colors down to black and white, let's go to effect, stylize, posterize, and we're just gonna set this to two. So then we can go to effect, color correction, tint, and we can then change the colors of our side faces and our bottom faces. So if we turn on our front face back on again, and so maybe we wanna change this black to a dark blue, then our white, we can change that to another shade of blue. Okay, something like that. Okay, and as you can see, we are left with these kind of rough edges here, which once we turn on our outlines layer, isn't going to matter anymore. But if you do want to get rid of them, we can go to effect, color correction and levels. And we're just going to drag this above our posterize. And then we just bring this center point down until the line disappears. Then the last thing we just need to do is just get rid of the back fill on our extrude layer. So what we're going to do for that is just duplicate our extrude and we'll call this matte. Then let's just delete all the effects from this and we'll drag this down underneath our background layer and we can just call this BG. And then what we would want to do on our matte is basically just get rid of our purple background. So go to effect king, color range and select the dropper and just select our purple background. And then you can increase the fuzziness a little bit just to soften the edge and unsolo that. And then our, on our extrude layer, let's go to effect, channel, set matte. And then we're going to select our 
mat layer as the layer we take our mat from and we'll change this to effects and masks okay so then let's jump back into our 3d pre-layer and we can just give some animation to our extrude and let's go into our text layer into the geometry options and go to the extrusion depth and let's just go to one second and then i'm just going to increase the extrusion depth some more just to get rid of this area here so let's maybe let's go I don't know, something like 120. And then let's set a keyframe for the extrusion depth. And then let's go to the start of our timeline. And what I found is if we set the extrusion depth to say one or two rather than zero, we just get a nicer effect when we've got our styling applied. Sometimes the find edges effect can look a little bit glitchy. I found when we've set this to zero and I found setting it to one or two helps that. And let's just select these keyframes. We'll hit F9 to add some easing. And we'll jump into the graph editor and let's just really ramp up and down that, the motion. Okay. And then let's just alt click our stopwatch and we'll just loop this using the loop out expression. And then type speech marks and then select ping pong. And then this will just loop back and forth between these two keyframes. Then let's go and see what this looks like in our main comp. You may just notice on this top edge, there's a little bit of jitteriness going on. And this is again, the sort of anti-aliasing issue, I think. And I found the easiest way is to kind of try and disguise it by adding a bit of jitter to the rest of the lines. So let's go to our outlines layer and go to effect, distort and turbulent displace. And what turbulent displace is going to do is just really distort our lines, but we can tweak the amount and the size to almost give our lines sort of hand drawn look. So I found if we reduce the amount to around 10 and then the size to five, you get a really small sort of wiggly line. And if we were to increase the evolution, you'll see that our line starts moving and we can just use a expression to basically change this value automatically based on the time of our comp. So let's all click on the stopwatch and we'll just put time times 2000. And what this is basically going to do is take our time in seconds and times it by a thousand and that will define what the evolution will be. And you'll see we get a nice sort of wobbly line here and it pretty much hides that top edge too. Now that we've applied the jitter to our lines, I realized that I forgot a setting earlier. If I zoom in, you'll see the along the edge of our outlines layer is this light gray line. And basically that is the find edges effect, adding on a an extra line on our on the outer edge of our outlines comp. And that's because in our 3D pre-layer, on our blur layer, I didn't set this to repeat edge pixels. And this basically means that we're going to get some blurring going on here on the edge of the comp. So it won't be full purple all the way to the edge. It's going to fade off and blur to black. And that's why we get this uh, edge here. So if we just go to blur and we just select repeat edge pixels, you'll see that straight away we've got a full purple color to the edge. And we go back to our main comp, you'll see we've got rid of that gray line. Okay, so that's the basics of the effect. I hope you found it useful. I know it's not the perfect effect and does need a little bit of tweaking here and there, depending on exactly how your text is set up and things. And if you've got any suggestions or ideas on how to improve this or make it feel a little bit less of a hack, then please let me know in the comments below. I'd really be interested to hear that. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then you may enjoy my last tutorial where I created a gloopy liquidy text dissolve effect. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.